In John chapter 3, verses 22 to 26, we have the setup for a fairly lengthy and very powerful response from John the Baptist to his disciples who are concerned that Jesus is beginning to take the spotlight away from him. You see, Jesus, who had just recently been baptized by John and begun his public ministry, has moved downriver a relatively short distance, and his disciples have begun to baptize people too. So, you have this awkward period where both John the Baptist and Jesus are preaching a message that people are responding to with repentance, evidenced by being baptized in water, and John's disciples are thinking, well, maybe our guy is becoming irrelevant. And if so, what does that say about us, our place in the world, our value, and so on? Now, I'll deal with John's speech in more detail later. But these initial verses introduce the subject of jealousy, comparison, and competitiveness. And those three sisters are extremely corrosive to our souls, but all of us know what it's like to have one or more of them come calling. In fact, I'd like to tell you about a serious run-in I had with them about 18 months ago. Here's some context. For several years, I'd been working to establish and then lead a vibrant, healthy men's ministry in our church. And as we began seeing real traction in this area, I was able to hand the leadership of it over to one of the guys who'd been helping me. And he did a great job, so much so that I could just show up for the meetings without having any responsibilities at all. And it was wonderful on one hand but very challenging on the other. It was wonderful to see the fruit of my labors, but I found myself having to deal with the temptation to entertain jealousy, comparison, and competitiveness because the ministry was actually doing better without me. There were more guys attending, engagement was higher, worship was stronger, and I found myself thinking, okay, why is this guy better than me? And then that turned into, what's wrong with me? And I began to question my worth and wondering if I'd become irrelevant. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Have you had someone step into the frame of your life who seemed better looking, more capable, smarter, or more effective than you and found yourself dealing with jealousy, comparison, and competitiveness? Look, the devil wants to try and snare us with that temptation because there is no good that comes from it. There's no path to a true sense of self-worth, to the securing of our souls that follows that road. It only leads to discouragement and self-defeating attempts to become someone other than the person God uniquely made us to be. There's only one way that you and I are meant to develop a healthy self-image and secure a sense of self-worth. It has to be based on how God values us. And he's made it clear that he considers us so valuable that we were worth the sufferings of the cross. Wow, just consider that for a minute. And that's what I experienced one morning at one of those men's gatherings when in the midst of the rising temptation to think otherwise, I heard the familiar voice of the Holy Spirit reminding me that I am treasured by the only one whose assessment truly matters. And I found myself confessing the pride and insecurity that I'd been giving place to. Then, I heard all over again, my Heavenly Father say to me, I love you, son. And in an instant, jealousy, comparison, and competitiveness evaporated from my soul. So if you've found yourself surrendering to the seduction of this demonic triad, don't take one more step down that path. Confess this as the sin it is and repent of it right now and listen to the message of the cross. You are love.